Right, OK, I'm going to try and talk you through the whole UCAS process, uh, which we would have had on the UCAS preparation day, but unfortunately we're not having. So I'm hoping that by doing it remotely, um, it will make sense um, and it will hopefully give you an idea as, how, as to where to start with um, applying to university. OK, so um, what we're going to try, what I'm going to try and do is give you some suggestions as to why you might want to go to university in the first place. So there's five big questions: why you should consider higher education, when you should study, what you should study, where, and how you actually go about filling out the application form. So that's what I'm going to look at um, in the next sort of 20 minutes, half an hour or so. So to start off with, oh, there's also sorry the uh, big question as to how much it's going to cost. OK, so we'll look at that towards the end. So is it the right choice? Now, there's there's a variety of things that you might look to do over the course of um, finishing school. Um, so the other things that you might be considering are degree apprenticeships, apprenticeships and work. So um, degree apprenticeships are begin becoming a bit more popular now. Um, they're quite difficult to find, um, but various universities, places like Exeter University, are offering degree apprenticeships in a range of of study areas, things like engineering, uh, things like accounting and finance, things like uh, computing, uh, where you would basically be employed by an employee. You would uh, work for them full time or four out of five days a week. And then the other day you would be working through, say, the exterior of university and taking exams. Now, at the end of that sort of um, period, however long that course might be, it's probably slightly longer than a three year degree course. Uh, you would get a degree awarded by, say, Exeter University. Um, and the beauty is that you would be paid throughout the time for the work you're doing. And also the employee will be covering the cost of your tuition fees. So you end up leaving um, with a degree, which is the same valuable degree as you would get from attending Exeter University normally, um, but you haven't paid for the cost. Uh, so that's great in terms of the cost. Um, what you aren't getting is the same sort of university experience of full time education and it is quite demanding. We've had a couple of students doing it and it is it is a lot of work um, because as well as your employed work, you are having to try and cram in that degree work around um, your employment. So it's tough going. OK, but um, that is something that you might consider. The other thing you might consider is not going to university and looking at an apprenticeship and for obviously for lots of types of courses, you don't need to have a degree. So if you can find an apprenticeship or paid employment straight away after school, then that's also great. Now, with, with both of those options, um, we have Miss Tully in school. And the best thing to do is to book an appointment with her, sit down one to one and look at the options available to you of what, what you might want to do. All right. But obviously, um, you might have no idea at the moment and you might think about taking a gap year as well. OK, so it might be that you decide on taking a gap year. When it comes to taking a gap year, if you're a little bit unsure as to whether to go to university or not, it's best to go through the application process this year, even if you applied for, say, deferred entry or if you decide at some point to pull out and definitely take a gap year um, because you've got the help and support at school. If you don't do it now, then it becomes a little bit more difficult if, if and when you do it having finished school. But um, we'll talk about that a bit more later. So if you decide on university, um, there, you know, there is a wide range of courses at the moment. You know, you have options of about maybe 25 subjects to study in sixth form. OK, you've got 55,000 different university courses available to you. So things like accountancy down to zoology at Swansea, things that you might never have even heard of. So there is a lot of research to be done before you actually find, let's say, the degree course is perfect for you. So to start with, you might try and narrow it down slightly into sort of a type of course. So we've got vocational courses which are specifically aimed at a career afterwards. So, for example, things like medicine, law, architecture, those sorts of courses are leading you into a particular path. And for those courses, you cannot do them unless you've got that degree. All right, so you, that's a reason for you having to go to university, perhaps. Then you've got something which is semi-vocational. So, um, you know, something like business studies, something like economics. It would usually lead you into a sort of business or for economics, maybe a finance sector later on. Uh, but it's not necessarily um, as specific as a vocational course. 
All right, but there's there's a kind of clear path, clear idea as to where you might want to go. And then you've got the sort of non-vocational courses, which are more like the subjects that you study now. So like you're studying math, you're studying French, you're studying history, and there's no particular obvious kind of career after that. OK, now don't be put off by that because a lot of university or a lot of employees will look at graduates and it won't matter to some extent what their degree is in. OK, if you've got a good degree from a good university, then you can go off into a wide range of, of jobs later. So, I mean, we've had examples before of student ambassadors that have done an English degree and then have ended up being employed by PricewaterhouseCoopers, one of the biggest financial um, graduate employees um, that there is. So it. You know, it's good to have an idea, but don't worry if if you just love, you know, you love history. You're not too sure what you want to do as a job, but you really love history. and You know, you want to study that at university, then that's absolutely fine. So once you narrow down the sort of type of course you might look at, then there's also the sort of types of qualifications. OK, so um, you've got to be a little bit careful when you look at this on the Internet um, on the website. OK, make sure you're taking the right type of course. So a full degree course will usually last at least three years. There are some fast track ones now which last two years, but generally speaking, it's a full three year course. Um, it might be that it's longer than this. It could be a four year course. Uh, generally speaking, a four year course might either be a bachelor's degree, which has a year in industry in the middle of it. OK, a sort of paid work placement or it might have travel abroad in the middle of it. So you do two years of your degree, then you might have your third year out either working or abroad and then you come back for your final year. So it's still three years of study and one year outside of that. So those are sort of bachelor degrees. Um, you can have a, a four year master's degree where you would do a three year bachelor's course and then another one year. So all four years would be at university then. Um, some courses last longer than that. So medicine, architecture, maybe five, six plus years as well right but that, that's a full-time degree there are some other things um particularly popular now are foundation degrees which might only be a single year okay and you might be looking for a course but let's say you're struggling to get the grades to start that course some universities will offer a foundation degree you go and spend the first year doing a foundation degree and providing you pass that then you'll be accepted onto the full degree course later okay so that's an option for places where maybe you haven't got the ucas predicted grades to apply to the degree course straight away um, and there's some other things that music colleges offer, which are slightly different, which I'll talk about later. How to find out more? Well, all of the information really is on the UCAS website. So it's the University and Colleges Admissions Service. And this is where you will go to apply to university. OK, so everything is on this website. Um, when you come to narrow down courses, OK, so you've got to make sure that you are going to enjoy the subject you're looking at. OK, um, you also need to think about whether you want to do perhaps you can't narrow it down, you want to do combined on it. So there's courses out there, things like um, natural sciences, which covers a range of science kind of subjects. There's things like liberal arts, which has a range of arts based subjects. So if you don't want to narrow it down too much, then there are broader degrees out there that you can choose from. Um, and you've also got to make sure you've got the right grades. So if I just try and take you away from here a minute and go to the UCAS website. Hopefully this will work. Um, let me just share my screen. OK, so. Um, Right, so on the UCAS website, um, there are a range of courses. So if you go to undergraduate, OK, um, and we look for choosing a course, for example, OK, then there is some more information down here which you can look at. OK, um, I want to go to UCAS course search. OK, now on here. Oh, I don't want to do that. Sorry. Oh. 
point. So I don't know why I had to do that. But if you go to UCAS Court Shirts, let's say we want to study something like chemistry. Okay, here we are. We're going to look to study 2021-22. Okay, undergraduate. You can put your postcode in if you want, but it doesn't matter too much. Okay, click on go. And here we go. We have a range of, sort of chemistry courses that you can look for and the range of universities. Now, you might not know which university you want to study at, and you might know straight away. So you can filter it um, accordingly. But let's say I'm going to look for a chemistry course in um, a popular university for us. It might be somewhere like um, Cardiff. OK, so here we are, Cardiff. Um, if you click on these 10 more undergraduate courses, you can see all of the different types of chemistry course they have. So things with a year in industry, a year abroad, you've got biochemistry as well as normal chemistry. OK, but I'm going to have a look at this and I'm going to look at um, just main chemistry. Now you can see here masters in chemistry, four years, bachelors in chemistry, three years. OK, so I'm just going to go for the standard three year course to start with. OK, so. If we click on that, it now gives us all the information. OK, so how to apply, entry requirements, etc. So it's good to have a look through here, look at some of the details and the stats. When it says application deadline, this is generally for most courses the 15th of January and for others it might be the 15th of October. Those are the UCAS deadlines. We'll have our school deadlines which are set earlier than that, which gives us time to send your application forms off. So although these are the deadlines, the deadlines we offer will be the end of term at the end of December and also for the October deadline we'll look at that about the 25th of uh, September. So those, those are the two dates you will work towards. Okay. Um, you can see here the entry requirements for that course. So typically speaking, somewhere between two A's and a B and an A and two B's. And it says you must have chemistry, which is what you'd expect. If you're taking the IB, then you can see here 34 points to 30 points to include chemistry. Um, and again, that means uh, there's a bit of bit of variety and that chemistry would probably have to be a high level. Um, Interesting thing here about the extended project, if you get an A in the extended project, then it says here the offer would be lower. OK, so if your extended project is relevant to that course, sometimes you get a slightly lower offer, which is what they're offering here. And there's also sometimes some information on your GCSE grades. Most of you will meet those anyway. Um, cost of the course is down there, £9,000. It's going to be at least £9,000, might be £9,250. We'll look at that a bit later as well. Um, and there's also some information down here on scholarship, so it might be worth looking if there's any extra financial support available. OK, so that gives you a bit of an idea of some of the information. Now, if you want to find out more, the best thing to do is to have a look at the course details and go onto the actual Cardiff University website for that um, breakdown of more information. OK, right. If I go back to my presentation, if I can remember how to do that. Um, okay, so oh, it's gone. Sorry. Reopen it a minute. So if I go back to where I was. OK, so um, gap year and deferred entry. Sorry. Yeah, as I said before, deferred entry is when you definitely know you want to take a gap year. So rather than applying to start in September of 2021, you will apply on your application form to start in September 2022. So you'd fill out the application form as normal now, but where it asks for the start date, you would put 2022. So that's if you're 100% sure you're taking a gap year. OK, when you get made the offers and you get your results, that place will be all sorted and then you can go off and do your gap year and you can go back to university in September 2022 without any problem. If um, you're not too sure, the best thing to do is to apply to start in 2021. And 
it might be that you decide a bit later you want to change that gap year and often you can contact the university and you can ask them to change that date a bit later okay so if you're not sure on gap year that's the best way around it okay you can always add a gap year in um, but it's difficult you know so only do deferred entry if you're 100% sure on that gap year right a few things to remember so it's important that you can enjoy studying this course for three years okay so if you're not 100% sure have a look at some of the future learn courses that we've put in the sixth form bulletin they sometimes have tasted courses on things that you haven't studied let's say you want to study criminology at university you've never done that before how do you know you're going to like it well maybe have a look at one of the massive open online courses on future learn um, and that will give you an idea as to whether you're going to enjoy that because it's quite expensive if you start the course and then drop out part way through check the content of the course carefully okay sometimes you know two english literature courses might look identical um, from the outset but when you look at bristol's um, the topics that they cover could be much more interesting to your personal interests than let's say the ones at cardiff so look at the look at the fine detail um, look at the options that are available look at how much flexibility there are for the type of assessment you know if you're better at coursework rather than exams you know what proportions there are um, and also do consider you know what your career is going to be afterwards now when it comes to offers and the tariff most top sort of 30 universities the russell group universities will make you an offer based on your grades three a's two a's and a b a and two b's to the sort of russell group universities um but some of them a bit lower down may offer you a ucas tariff so it might say for example you need to get 120 points okay um well that basically um means that you need to get three b's okay but it could be an a a b and a c all right so if you see that tariff point score there is a ucas calculator where you can convert those um into sort of grades and that offers us sometimes a bit more flexibility in terms of the offer so let's say you're struggling with one of your a levels but you're doing really well with the other two then a tariff based offer might be better for you um, than let's say having to get three b's explicitly similarly for the ib there's a sort of tariff um equivalences in this table here okay so you could work out what it would be um, in terms of your hires and standards etc so in terms of getting more information as well as the ucas website there's lots of other bits and pieces so um here's, here's a few to give you some ideas um uk course finder that's quite uh, that's quite handy and, it, and within the um new ucas uh um account which i suggested to you before we sort of broke down uh, signing up for that there is a, a sort of similar thing where you answer questions and it gives you ideas about courses which might be suited to your interests okay but as well as that you've got miss tully myself miss shaw dr stites your tutor your teachers etc so you can use all of those um, as well to try and help how does the actual process work so what you are given are five choices you can apply to five different universities you can apply to three different universities and a couple of different choices within those universities um, but it's all done online through the UCAS website okay and as I said to you before um, we have a, a deadline for the end of December before you break up for Christmas um, oh, this is gone a little bit funny sorry about that but it's a it, it, on that application form you have to fill out lots of information so GCSE results you have to um, we have to put down as teachers predicted grades there's also a section for you to write your personal statement and there's a section for your teachers to write a reference so all of that information will go onto your application form and you'll send it off to your chosen universities okay on top of that some of you may have to sit admissions tests so if you're looking at applying to oxford and cambridge you will have to do an admissions test if you're looking at applying for law you might have to do an admissions test um, if you're looking at applying for medicine you will probably have what well, you will have to sit a ucat or a bmat if you're looking at veterinary science and a couple of other things you you might have to do that as well um, for certain courses at certain university they might ask for a piece of written work uh, you might be called for interviews so oxbridge medics you will have to go for an interview as well uh, if it's an art based course you might have to show them a portfolio of work and if it's a music course or a drama course you might have to do an audition so so um, everybody has to do the first sort of five and then the second five are ones which some of you may have to do as well um okay so there's a few special cases lawyers as i said some of you might have to sit the l that so if you decide to apply to one of these universities here uh, birmingham bristol durham glasgow nottingham oxford kings london uh, soas which is a 
School of Oriental and African Studies and UCL University College London, then you will have to sit the LNAT. And that's something that you arrange yourself. You can sit it at the sort of local driving theory test centre in Torquay, um, but you have to register for that test in August and you have to sit it sometime between September and when you um, are sending your application off. All right, if you're going to Oxford or you're hoping to go to Oxford or Cambridge, you have to sit that test before the 20th of October. OK, or round round then that don't miss, it might be slightly different. Medics, vets and dentists. OK, you can only apply to four medical schools, four dentistry schools, four veterinary science schools. You can have a fiff choice, but it has to be for something else. It might be biomedical science or it might be physiotherapy or it might be something along those lines. OK, but four choices on the UCAS application form for medicine. You need to have some work experience and we're going to talk about that in your personal statement. Um, it's likely that you're going to have interviews for those as well. Um, and you're probably going to have to do either the UK CAT or the BMAT, or you might do both, depending on your choices. So the majority use the, U, or the UCAT, it's called now UCAT. Um, Oxbridge and the London ones, Brighton, Leeds do the BMAT. OK. Um, and the registration for those opens soon. Now, as I said, our deadline will be uh, put the 26th. I think that's a Saturday, 25th, 26th of September around that point. OK, so it's off in time for the 15th of October deadline. Um, similarly, for Oxford and Cambridge, you can't apply to both, only one or the other. So you have to choose between the two and you will have to sit for the majority of those courses, some sort of entrance test, thinking skills assessment, maybe or a hat for the history aptitude test or an ELAP for English literature aptitude test, etc. You will be called for interview if they think your application form is strong enough. OK, and um, again, they have this. We have the same internal deadline of about the 26th of September uh, so that we can send those applications off for the 15th of October. If you're thinking of going into art, you might decide to do a foundation course or you might apply straight to university. Um, so for that, you will have to produce some sort of portfolio of work. Um, and the best person to talk to is Mr. Prashad for that. So he can give you some more information if you are thinking about that. And he does arrange some uh, in, uh, some of the from sort of Kevix, um foundation course to come in and talk to you usually each year. So have a have a word with him. Uh, and similarly, musicians, you can apply to musical school through UCAS, but sometimes you might apply to a conservatoire, which you use a different website called QCAS, or is part of UCAS, but it's a different process, different timeline. So there's not many people that do that, but we, have, we had one last year. So if there is, you need to come and speak to me, speak to Mr. Eastman and let us know that you're thinking about that route. OK. Right. The final decision. So. Um, when you put those choices down, they are kind of invisible to the other universities, so they won't know. It just goes in alphabetical order on your application form. Uh, once you've received all the decisions back, uh, which will be sometime between when you sent your application form and the end of March, you then have to decide on a firm choice and an insurance choice. So out of those five, if you've got all five offers back, you have to decide which is your first choice, which is your insurance choice. Um, there's some other things as well that you might use UCAS Extra. So if, if in the process you change your mind and you want to change courses or if you don't get any offers back, then UCAS Extra is something that we can look at. But I'll talk to you about that um, sort of nearer the time. An adjustment and clearing of things uh, that happen on results day. So adjustment is if you do better than expected and want to try and upgrade your place and clearing is something if you've not done as well as expected and, and you missed your, your offers and you have to try and find somewhere else. Okay, so the last thing is how much it's going to cost. Now again, I'll come back to this later. So I'll give you a brief overview now, but we'll go through this in more detail sort of after Christmas. Um, it's likely that it's going to cost you over £9,000 each year for your tuition. Okay? Um, and similarly, uh, it's going to cost you a similar amount in terms of living expenses. So um, everybody is eligible for a loan, which will cover the cost of your tuition fees. So that you don't have to pay those up front. Um, the student loan company will just pay directly at the start of each term um, your tuition fees and they'll do that in sort of three installments across the year. Okay, we do get charged interest up on that so it does build up but it's a very low rate. The second thing is the maintenance, how much it costs to live. Now it, you know here's an example it might be a bit dated now but roughly speaking if you're going in catered accommodation three terms it's going to cost you something like eight thousand nine thousand pound okay so here's a bit of a breakdown as to where that comes from. Most of that cost is accommodation 
Um, you've got food and drink, books and equipment, etc. So it's quite a lot of money, sort of eight and a half, nine thousand pounds a year. Obviously, you might save on some of these. You might decide to go self-catered, but obviously then your food costs might go up. So you've got to decide what you would like and how much you can afford. Um, now, these are the 1920 levels, so they do change every year, but not massively. Um, if these are means tested, so if you decide that you're going to study extra and live at home, then you'd be eligible for up to seven and a half thousand pounds to cover your living costs. And that is money that's paid to you, goes into your bank account in three instalments, and you have to budget that across the across the year. For most of you, you're going to fall into this category where you're studying away from home, living away from home, but studying outside of London. So if you go to Bath or Cardiff or Bristol, then you are eligible for up to just under £9,000. And if you decide to study in London, then because of the expense of living and working and studying in London and the food prices, etc., you are eligible for up to £11,600. Now, I say up to because these are means tested. So um, depending on your household income will depend on how much you get. OK, so as I say, everybody's eligible for the tuition fee loan, but the maintenance loan um, will vary depending on your household income. So if your household income, for example, is £40,000 and you are going to study at Exeter and live with your parents, then you would be eligible for about 5600 Now, that might not be enough to live off, so you would be expecting that your parents would either help a little bit and give you some money towards your expenses, or you might have to get some paid employment to make up the difference. If you're going to study uh, in London, OK, and live away from home, and let's say your household income is £40,000, then you would get about 9700 okay. And for most of you, like I said, this sort of Cardiff, Bath, Bristol, let's say, again, your household income was 40000 you would get about 7000 OK, so this is the maximum is 8900 but that's only if your household income is below £25,000. If your household income is over £62,000, then you get the minimum, which is 4168 It doesn't get any lower than that. So the minimum you get is 4000 The maximum you get is 9000 Okay, depending on your household income. So it gives you a bit of a rough idea. There is extra support through things like bursaries and scholarships. OK, so you have to look at the individual universities to see what they offer. But if your household income is below £25,000, the university has to offer some sort of bursaries and you wouldn't pay these back. OK, scholarships are more um, related to uh, excellence as opposed to household income. So if you're particularly good at sport or particularly good with academics, then you can apply for some scholarships. And again, you wouldn't pay that information, uh, that, um, that funding back. That would be to keep unlike a loan. Um, so when it says household income, this is the sort of detail that your parents might want to know. But again, we'll come back to that um, in, in sort of January, February time. As I said, the universities do have to offer you some help if you're on low income households so below £25,000. So here's an example um, from Oxford from a couple of years ago. Um, they, they will possibly charge you less for your tuition fees. So if your household income uh, is less than 16,000, then you'll only pay 6,000 pound in tuition fees. If it's 25,000 or more, you'll pay 9,250. So depending on your household income, you might pay between 6,000 and 9,000 for your tuition fees. If your household income is less than 42,000, then they will give you a grant to help towards those costs. Okay, and that's up to about 3,700 pounds. So you would get a bit of extra help from the universities. When it comes to paying loans back you don't have to pay these back until you start earning over about twenty six thousand pound it'll probably be by the time you get there so once you earn over twenty six thousand pound you'll get a cut taken from your um wages so um so let's say for example your uh, income is twenty eight thousand pounds you pay back nine percent of the difference between twenty eight thousand pounds and twenty five thousand seven hundred and twenty five okay so um it's not a massive amount, OK? What that would work out at is something around about, let's say, £20 a month. Now, if you're earning £28,000, you'd be paying 20% tax, OK, on some of that. So you might be paying four, or £500 a month in your tax and national insurance. You're only going to be paying about £20 for your student loan. So 
it is more like a graduate tax. You, you know, in that context, compared to what you pay in tax, national insurance is a very small amount, which is why it's maybe still affordable and still a good idea to go to university. OK, a um, couple of other things on your loans. OK, you um, you can take breaks from it. So if you stop working, you don't have to pay. Uh, or if your earnings fall, you don't have to pay back. And anything after 30 years is, is wiped off. OK, but all the information is on the direct gov website. OK, so what else should you be doing now? This is slightly different from normal. Normally we say research courses, visiting institutions, etc. It's very difficult for us to visit those institutions at the moment. So you'd be looking online and lots of the universities are offering and things like that. So have a look at the universities that you're interested in and see what they're offering. Um, to to make you be able to find out more about them. Similarly, enhancing your application, it's going to be difficult for you to go and do work experience and things like that at the moment. But there are things you can be doing, such as wider reading. Um, maybe look at the reading list for Oxford and Cambridge and some ideas on there if um, if that helps. OK, so I think I've covered everything. Hopefully that helps um, and uh, that gives you an idea as to where to start. OK, good luck.